Peace and freedom and grace be with you. My name is John Clifton. Welcome to another edition of Hard Fire. Uh, this episode deals with a intriguing topic that many people are not quite aware of, uh, of a tendency of, of many people to uh, alleviate severe pain they're suffering from and the lengths they would go to uh, alleviate that pain. Uh, we have a person who is going to explain her experience and another person to discuss uh, the legal ramifications of it. Uh, here with us today is Pamela Wilcox, a member of the Libertarian Party, uh, also a uh, advocate for um, people who are suffering from chronic pain, also a, I would say, a political, um, a, you know, a freedom fighter of sorts and yeah. a convicted felon. Uh, and she will explain her experience. Also, we have Rosemarie uh, Mark Graff, uh, who is a uh, Republican Assembly District leader from uh, 52nd Assembly District. Yes. And uh, she's again here to discuss uh, the cons of the kind of actions that were performed by Ms. Wilcox. Um, Pamela, could you explain your experience and what happened? Well, it actually started in uh, 1979 when I fell down a um, staircase and um, had a fracture on my uh, back and uh, about two years later I had um, a ski ball injury if you don't know what that, that is that's um, you know when you throw the ball into the circles like mini miniature bowling and um, the third one was uh, soon after that and it was a car um, accident mm -hmm. and uh, I went to uh, well first I well I went to several doctors and um, uh, well this one at uh, first seemed to be uh, willing to treat me but um, when uh, I didn't seem to be getting better at first he sent me to one doctor to see if I could get a an operation, but uh, while I couldn't, um, you know, this other doctor, he decided not to see me anymore, not to write any more prescriptions because I still had the pain, because he couldn't do anymore. Mm -hmm. And he didn't, uh, you know. Had he reached the limit of his patience or the limits of whatever his whatever he policy he's operating under? Uh, Whatever, well, I think it was his own uh, feeling of what he could do for me. Mm -hmm. But he, d he didn't realize that the pain was still there. I see. And uh, I went to my own, do my uh, regular doctor and uh, a few uh, others. And uh, by 1995, I had a few other pain issues. And plus, um, I was just so fed up with this mm -hmm. that um, I uh, took uh, a couple of uh, prescriptions from a doctor's desk and uh, wrote my and wrote my own. Well, at first I mm -hmm. just um, tampered with them, but I mm -hmm. did start to write my own. And um, through um, a, a, um, a, a um, conversation with the dr with a dr between the druggist and uh, one of the doctors, um, they um, found that one was forged and. Yeah, they didn't do anything for quite a while, and then I got a phone call mm -hmm. on a Friday saying that uh, I was in, I was under arrest and to come in on uh, um, mo Monday. Mm -hmm. That gave me a lovely weekend, of course, mm -hmm. and um, I was arrested. Um, and the outcome of that going into all the details, the outcome of the, your prosecution, um, you, were you convicted, were you? 
uh, I was convicted of possession of a forged instrument, which usually carries from uh, one and a half to four years. But my doctor heard of this new um, uh, you know, drug rehab, mm -hmm. you know, and I'd been in before, you know, to try to, uh, you know, not, not, not in this one, in another one, this was an, uh, totally in, uh, uh, patient, in, um, the system, the, the, and, um, it turned out to be a boot camp. And uh, I was I was 43 years old at the time, by the way, and they um, and my hair was shaved, and uh, they put on maneuvers and everything. And this, this, this is the sentence you were under, or the it was the one that was supposed to keep it shorter. Oh, and um, I only lasted um, about two weeks. And uh, they sent me back. It was their um, decision, not mine. Yeah. And since it was a new program, I um, didn't know um, that, that, like they, well, they didn't know what yeah. to do to me. Yeah, I think the target population for that kind of thing is the younger person who's been an offender, and they didn't know what to do with a, a middle-aged lady who'd had injuries, you know, um, and, and was uh, you were still in pain, I think. Uh, uh, yes, mm -hmm. and uh, so um, uh, uh, while they were debating, I ended up spending uh, 11 months. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm glad that um, it wasn't uh, more. Right. It could be up to uh, four years. Well, let me just ask you one qu uh, quick question here. Why? would you believe what you experienced in terms of being convicted and sentenced to either jail or a boot camp um, might not be the correct course of action of, by the government, you know, in dealing with you? I was 43 years old and in pain. And, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, mm -hmm. I didn't seem appropriate and, um, you know, not that I'm proud of anything. I mean, you know, to, you know, the deception and the stealing, I don't care about. But being put in a uh, place where I, uh, you know, would think of that, mm -hmm. I mean, there has to be something wrong. All right. Well, Miss, um, Mark Kraft, I, you've listened very patiently to this. Uh, um, what were your response to her experience? Well, all the while she was talking about her experiences, I want you to know that she has my sympathy for anyone in, as anyone in pain does. But when I was asked to be on this program, I was told that she had forged a doctor's signature to get, in order to get the prescriptions. So the first thing I thought of was, my God, this, this is a crime. And so I went to, you know, being the teacher, I went to Section 170 of the Penal uh -huh. Law, and I said that uh, this is even a lesser degree, forgery in the third degree. Among other things, it says, when someone with intent to defraud, he falsely makes, completes, or alters a written instrument. And this was certainly a, a, a Class A misdemeanor. And so, I you know, I'm from the old school where if you do something that is a misdemeanor, that certainly you should pay for it. But, but what worries me about this is that when people think they can write their own prescriptions, to use her word, she tampered with the prescription, which means she changed it a little bit. And then she signed this name, you know, uh -huh. committed forgery. We hear so many reports about, about people getting addicted to drugs because of they, they want the stronger doses to relieve the pain. This uh -huh. is one of the things that really frightens me when I hear of people doing this. We hear about the famous people who are getting their doctors to do it and give uh -huh. them painkillers, so-called painkillers. So even when they really do have pain, such as this lady does, did and does have, I'm, I'm convinced of that. I, I just think there's a real danger in allowing people 
to tamper with prescriptions, to forge a name. I'm not talking about the legal aspects now. Uh -huh. I'm talking about the dangers of people becoming addicted to drugs, painkillers especially. That's what uh -huh. we read about when people keep getting them. So that that's a, yeah. as big a fear to me as, as breaking the law in her case. Well, you, a person who is of a libertarian frame of mind can be conflicted about the circumstances here because uh, on the one hand, we are opposed to fraud, including you know representation well, of oneself and their uh, and one's rep, uh, credentials uh, a, a, or, or the source of materials that they gotten. Uh, we think that it's wrong to fraudulently represent you know uh, yourself or or documentation you have, um, et cetera, et cetera. Well, on the other hand, and our major in our major key as a uh, philosophy and as a party and all is to want free people to have freedom, to have access to whatever they will ingest uh, at their own risk or benefit. Uh, and in that context, I'm looking at it from the point of view of there was a fraud, but the fraud only existed or was perpetrated in the context of an unjustified crimp in her freedom to have access to needed medication, or in her case, wanted medication that she felt would be appropriate for her, you know, in, in dealing with her um, injury. Do you understand the difference between um, our, our point of view where we, we think nobody should be deciding for other people who should be allowed access and allowed, you know, to be, be with a drug and, and that people should make their own decisions uh, for good or ill? I understand that, but I think that when it comes to drugs that certain people, doctors, are trained on how to handle these drugs, how okay. to prescribe these drugs, that we, even though we may think we want them, are, we don't have the training, we don't have really the basic knowledge, we just know we're in pain. And I mean, I, I sympathize with her, thank goodness my pain hasn't been, I mean, I, I'm a cancer survivor, I've been in a, mm -hmm. a horse accident that had me with a round the clock mm -hmm. service, so I know about pain. But at no time, what, when you talk about freedom, I was grateful that I had the mm -hmm. freedom to select doctors. I yep. did a lot of reading. I asked mm -hmm. a lot of questions before I went to a doctor. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think this is the freedom that I'm in favor of. I mean, well, just one just quick analogy here. You've got people who know how to cook, which is most people. I'm really not one of those people. Yeah, uh, I, well, other I was going to say, are you? Um, and there, there are professional chefs. Yes. So. Should we uh, run all of our meals that we prepare every day by a professional chef in order to eat? Oh, no, 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 come on, come on, you're, you're I'm, I'm too saying, unlike. should we professionalize everything and put a professional middleman in between us before we do There's any There's a big um, difference between cooking, a, putting something in the microwave, putting something on a, on, a, on a garland stove, a big, big difference in handling of drugs. Come on, we have a big problem, I'm getting off the subject, we have a big problem with drugs and even if they're prescribed by the so-called experts and that's why I'm so afraid of people prescribing their own drugs. Well now the setting has been um, established for our back and forth. Uh, I will get back to the subject after a public service announcement on behalf of the Libertarian Party in the New York City area. I think it's very important that viewers uh, avail themselves of the many resources uh, for learning about libertarian philosophy and ideas. Uh, from the Manhattan Libertarian Party, who you can go to their website at manhattanlp.org uh, and find out what that group is doing within the Big Apple to promote liberty. Uh, you can also contact the Libertarian Party of Queens County, lpqc.org, uh, and, and or you can come to the meetings of the uh, Queens Party in Astoria each month. Uh, you can also um, visit our state website, uh, ny.lp.org, where you will be able to avail yourself of, again, all kinds of information about the activism and ideas being promoted by um, party leaders and other um, advocates for liberty. We hope that you take advantage of, of these resources and invest the time and energy to become, become more um, educated about um, how to promote and bring back liberty to New York. Um, well, I want to go to a tete-a-tete -tete here on the matter of free access to um, medication that will alleviate pain. Uh, what do you think of the, the arguments that, that the law should prevail, and that there should be a middleman between you and uh, drugs that will alleviate your pain? Um, well, 
The thing is, I didn't just, between 1979 and 1995 is mm -hmm. a long time. I mean, I didn't just go out and say, oh, I hurt, so I'm going to get some, uh, you know, uh, some pain pills and, uh, you know, and go out and forge them. I mean, it was a long time. I mean, and I did have doctors in between. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, it, um, no, I mean, I, I'd be uh, comfortable if um, an adult had um, at least one consult with a doctor. I mm -hmm. uh, mean, and uh, they wouldn't have to have a, a prescription. I mean, the doctor wouldn't have to approve, mm -hmm. but they'd have to be able to prove, you know, what was said about um, mm -hmm. the pros and cons of the drug. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? Well, I just want to interrupt because before we went on the air, you told me that you had been to a pain clinic after many years. And so I want to know about your experience there. Uh, I, I keep, I've never been to one myself, but I do mm -hmm. read about such things. And I, you know, I've said, well, I guess that's a good idea. So tell me about it. Uh, that's a good question. The first one, um, I got kind of tired because my regular doctor had started to give me, um, you know, uh, Tylenol with codeine, and that was helping. But um, later on, I got a, a, a foot problem, which no podiatrist, well, they, they diagnosed it, but because I'm diabetic, no less than nine refused to operate, and there was no other real way. And, um, uh, well, anyhow, the first pain clinic I, yeah, I kind of walked away from because it was, you know, they, they wanted you to see, um, a, you know, a doctor for, you know, like a, 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 a an intake doctor. A and yes, a refer. Well, uh, no, it was on, no, they they were on the staff. Oh, okay. But they. Um, but the whole process, you got to see one guy in a white coat who um, diagnoses you and then yeah. gives you a prescription, and, and then you see another guy in a white coat. Or woman or whatever who well, gives well, the, the first meds. one did, did, wasn't allowed to give um, mm -hmm. controlled substances, mm -hmm. and then I was supposed to see somebody who, um, you know, uh, some kind of uh, psychologist mm -hmm. who also can't prescribe, and I didn't know mm -hmm. when, and uh, I kind of walked away from that mm -hmm. one. Well, but let then me, the let me interrupt you so, so that we can continue the flow here, but. The, my my point here, in terms of you know, access to drugs for people who may have the most knowledge, um, you've gone through and lived your pain, lived through ten some odd years of these injuries and medications and treatments. Uh, why should there be an unconditional standard or policy where she has to go through two or three middlemen at all points in order to receive access to information to me medication? Uh, that she already knows about, that she's already experienced, that she's already been briefed on over the years by her doctors. Why does it have to still go there through? Does, there's no written rule that says you have to go through two or three middlemen. If you, you, you at the beginning talked about all this wonderful information we in America have, you going to the mm -hmm. doctor's office, da da da. Yeah. All right, so. I mean, in her case, so. clearly she has a lot of information about her diagnosis, her her injuries, and her the med treatment modalities, whatever for for. for dealing with alleviating her pain. So why isn't, can't she be considered enough of an expert to handle her own medication? Just because, just because I was through pain of, from a horse accident, I certainly was, was not, and I guess I did lots of really believe mm -hmm. because I wanted to have an intelligent conversation. Yeah. I was always informed that if I asked questions, that's, mm -hmm. that's one of the best things, the best pieces of advice I ever got before going to a doctor. It's, no, write down in advance the questions you have to ask. But anyway, I haven't had to go through the middleman. So, I mean, I got to the person I wanted to, 
by asking the right questions. And so I, I think you're being a little unfair about our system to say you have to go through two or three people before you get to the right person. It is the law, apparently. A person cannot get a single prescribed medication without going to a doctor oh, and yeah. or a pharmacist. Right. Uh, that's just the way it is. And I'm saying well, that in, in, I agree with. That, that's the, the crux of the issue. The control of everyone's access in every single kind of case, regardless of how much knowledge they have about their condition and their treatment, um, that's what con we consider to be a drag on liberty. Because we, we, people are as heavily um, educated about their own medical history or have as much access to information in our country about uh, the dangers and benefits of drugs, you know, why should there be such artificial draconian limits on people's access. Well, as I asked you before, if they have all this information about drugs, why do we have such a heavy drug problem, so many drug users in the U.S.? And this is one of the things I said that scares me. If people can go and get the drugs they want to alleviate pain mm -hmm. that they haven't had, that there may be a selfish motive involved too, you see, and they may get addicted to it without realizing they're being addicted. I think this is one of the that scary, is I think that's a very scary part. But that, that is their personal responsibility, as, as we would say, along with the, the personal liberty they're exercising. Um, I, I would ask, are you alone in this situation where you, are, are there, more, um, are you the only person who's fibbing on prescription forms, or there is a class of people like that? I, I know of one other person. Mm -hmm. Who I knew on the who I I met after it had been over with both of us on the internet, mm -hmm. and um, okay, I'm uh, sure there's a there's a community one can access through the net uh, to find others who at least want to talk about it or have a support group, uh, and you well, might exchange strategies well, about. Well, this was a chronic pain support mm -hmm. group, right. and you wouldn't believe. I mean, uh, she was really. Um, harassed badly because she didn't come out at first and mm -hmm. say it. Because I said it. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people want to harass. In fact, I had to give mm -hmm. our producer a, well, he had to give me a code. Mm -hmm. And, you know, because I was afraid that these mm -hmm. people would try to, um, you know, yeah. um, badmouth me or say I mm -hmm. didn't want to come or something. And, um, mm -hmm. Anyway, um, it's... Uh, well, one um, hypothetical. Um, let's suppose um, she's able to travel to another country and meet a doctor or running a store who gives her a 10-year supply of uh, the appropriate pain medication that she might want, and she's able to get it back into this country. Would that be... No, I'm not in favor of that either. That's I mean, well, that's the doctor signing off on it. That, but <laughs> it's... <laughs> well... <laughs> I'm not in favor of that. Uh, I'm in favor of getting lower priced. I must put in my thing for freedom. Mm -hmm. I'm in favor of getting lower priced uh, medicines available to well, us. That's, but I know I, how body, that's how bodybuilders have gone across the border to Mexico for years getting steroid medication that's on the shelf over the counter uh, and then bringing it back over you know, the border. Uh, with them. I mean, because there are different laws, that this, this whole issue and, and concept of you got to go through these white coat wearing uh, middlemen or to get a drug is, is really uh, primarily a U.S. and um, Western Very European Very frankly phenomenon. though, I'd be afraid to get those drugs off the shelf in some of these countries. I really would. Mm -hmm. And I, it's not that I'm in favor of, uh, uh, of all the uh, propaganda being handed out by the government that we can't trust medicines from, from Canada, for instance, from very respected drug stores. I'm not in favor of that, but I just would be afraid mm -hmm. for my own safety to go to another country, even if I wanted to try some of these uh -huh. wonderful products. Now, let me give you, not, not connected with pain, but for example, uh, in the United States you need Retin-A, a, a uh -huh. prescription for Retin-A. Uh -huh. Very frankly, I mean, it's not only for acne, it's for older skin too. I'd be afraid to get it, it would be much cheaper, uh -huh. to just get it in Mexico. But you see, I really believe what I'm saying to you people, that I believe I have to get an expert's opinion in it. And I'm sure I've read a lot about that, mm -hmm. about Retin-A, but I'm not an expert. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, uh, you don't have a problem with expert opinions, but uh, is there, is you have a problem with control freaks, you know, saying you can't get the thing unless 
somebody else sign for somebody with a license signs off on it for you, and then somebody else with a license provides you the drugs. Um, I don't care for that because I went through um, a lot of uh, pain and stuff that uh, I wouldn't. Uh, and uh, and per personally, I I have yet to find uh, a uh, working. Um, definition of addiction. For myself, I just call it a non-issue. I mean, you know, I, I need the um, drugs. They take away the pain. I mean, now that um, doctors are willing to write, uh, well, a doctor is willing to write, I, you know, I'm not uh, committing any crimes, yeah. although I don't think it should be such a crime. And, uh, well, as speaking as a substance abuse, sometimes substance abuse counselor, the, the addictions that they pre prevail in the industry is models of one of you know lifestyle pattern, and if you and also chemical addiction is if your body starts to assume that it needs um, a substance or that a substance is natural to the body, then you're considered chemically addicted to uh, it. Um, well, that happens anyway. It's a dependence. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, you know, doctors even, even, and patients, even when they know it's going to be mm -hmm. um, like relatively short term, mm -hmm. they don't uh, take the drug away as soon as the pain goes away. They um, mm -hmm. they taper the people down. Okay, thirty seconds. You got to say yes, something. Yes, I have one yeah. final question. With all this work you do on the internet, haven't hasn't anyone been able to recommend a doctor that they trusted who has helped them with their pain? Who is? Uh, that well, uh, you could go to. Well, uh, well, I'm seeing somebody now. Um, so you don't have to do your own. Well, you don't I, have I, to, you I, I, I more forward. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well um, I, I didn't quite finish. Uh, the sorry. second doctor well, died. I, I, we, I'm sorry, we have no more time. I, I, that's all we have for this edition. <laughs> yeah. I'd like to thank um, Pamela Wilcox and Rosemary uh, Marcraft. Thank, thank you. you. And I thank the audience, and I welcome you to come to another exciting episode of Heartfire. And I want you all to know she has my sympathy. <laughs> Thank you.